How do you know if it's true hunger or if you're just having a craving? Welcome to another episode of Dr. Confidential. I'm Dr. Amy and I love to talk to you behind the scenes about things I'm working on, things I've learned, things that you should know, and the behind the scenes of a doctor life. Today, we're gonna to be talking about something that's very, very close to my heart because I love nutrition. I talk about intermittent fasting all the time, gut health, and we're talking about something that kind of encompasses it all. It's hunger versus cravings. How do you know hunger? How do you know cravings? So you might not realize that hunger is a physiological process that actually starts in the brain. It starts in the hypothalamus. There's a special area of the hypothalamus called the arcuate nucleus that has the most number of neurons that are involved in hunger. So this is where hunger begins. It's actually in a very different part of the brain than cravings. Cravings is a dopamine pathway. So cravings, you may feel cravings even when you're not hungry. So this pathway is very different than the hunger pathway. Remember, hunger can be cyclical also. So hunger can happen because you're used to waking up and having a cup of coffee and eating your breakfast. Your ghrelin, your hunger hormone, will be also used to rising at that particular time of day. So ghrelin is cyclical and is related to hunger. And ghrelin can be changed. You can change the timing of ghrelin. And that's why when I talk to people about intermittent fasting, they may struggle at first with hunger at the time of their usual meals because ghrelin is used to being produced at that time. However, if you start intermittent fasting and your body basically gets a signal to change that ghrelin release, that's why people will say, oh, it was really difficult in the beginning and then I got used to it. So that is how ghrelin works. Then we have melanocyte stimulating hormone, MSH. Now, MSH is a hormone that you might not have heard about very often in the setting of hunger and cravings, but this is very interesting because we know that if you get plenty of sunlight or nature time, that melanocyte stimulating hormone can blunt the appetite. So this makes sense, right? When you're on vacation or in a sunny environment, your appetite may be a little bit less than when you're indoors and in a cold environment. But in our world where we live indoors a lot and we don't see a lot of natural light, it could explain why we have a little bit harder time regulating our appetite. Now let's talk a little more about cravings. Cravings is very similar. Food cravings is very similar to alcohol and drug cravings. This is a feeling that is almost uncomfortable. It's pleasurable and uncomfortable at the same time when you truly have activated the dopamine pathway. So what I mean is, if you can think of a food that you love so much that you would have it even when you're full, that you would pursue, that you would drive across town to get, or on some days you just can't live without it, and then you get that food and it's a pleasurable feeling, but it's also almost an anxious or uncomfortable feeling at the same time, that's a true sign that you have found what is stimulating your dopamine pathway. For a lot of us, that is like a warm chocolate chip cookie or like French fries. These activate, especially processed foods, they really can activate that dopamine pathway. What is sad to know is that a lot of companies work to create that dopamine pathway stimulation because cravings are very strong. They're very strong motivators. They will motivate you to stop what you're doing and go grab that food. So be careful when you have identified the foods that create that dopamine pathway, because that's a signal to you that you're not necessarily acting out of hunger, you're acting out of cravings. One of the best tests I have for you to determine whether it's hunger or cravings is a bowl of vegetables test. I love vegetables and maybe you do too. So if someone gave you a bowl of very lightly seasoned vegetables, maybe just boiled or steamed with a little bit of salt, would you want to eat it? And when you're truly hungry, you're probably going to want to eat that or substitute something that you can think of that's unprocessed and healthy 
that you would eat when you were truly hungry, but that you would not eat if you weren't truly hungry. And that's a great way, very simple way of testing whether this is a hunger signal or this is a craving signal. So this is a great test. Now, the other test is the one I told you is how do you know this is a craving? Um, it's because of that uncomfortable slash pleasurable feeling that you get when you get that food. It is a feeling of, oh shoot, should I eat this whole thing? Is there going to be more later? Am I going to get another chance to eat it? Um, it's so good, but it's so bad. You know, this whole like mind connection that is your dopamine pathway. This is the pathway that many people might feel with alcohol and you may feel with drugs. And so when people ask like, how do you know if you're addicted? That is a sign to check because that dopamine pathway gets, for a lot of people, it gets uh, lights up like that when they have alcoholic drinks. And that's why they have trouble controlling their urges around it. So I hope this was helpful and I hope that you can use the vegetable bowl test or a similar test in your life to determine whether it's hunger or cravings. Now, you might be asking the follow-up question, which is, okay, well, I know now what hunger and what cravings are, but how do I stop cravings in their tracks? The one thing you have to know about dopamine pathways is it's highly motivational. When you activate the dopamine pathway, you will want to pursue that food. And it's very sad, like I said, because food companies, soda companies have really hijacked this mechanism and keep you addicted and keep you motivated to get more of that. And so what I suggest in this case is if you have identified a food, alcoholic substance or drug substance that is producing that physiological response in your body, it is best to limit or eliminate that food at least for a short period of time. This is a way for you to kind of step back see if this is an addiction or something that is just natural and normal and reassess your relationship with that food. So for example, I'll give a very benign example for me, warm chocolate chip cookies. I love them. And if I have them in the house, I will be highly motivated to go and get more. And that whole dopamine pathway gets triggered in my brain. However, if I don't eat them for a long period of time, I'm able to control my urges around them. So this might be helpful for you if you're trying to control your cravings for something else. I hope this video was helpful for you and I hope that you're able to figure out a little bit more about hunger versus cravings. I hope you'll check out some of the other videos we have about gut health, intermittent fasting. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Ian.